Sakura. Lots and lots of Sakura. That's what you'll expect in this video as we traverse through Kansai region of Japan to hunt for the best spots to find them. Hi, my name is Sean and welcome to this vlog. In just 4 days, we cover 3 major cities, Osaka, Kyoto, and Nara to show you the best attractions in each city. From Tokyo to Osaka, the high-speed bullet train offered us 3 hours of scenic ride through Japan's picturesque countryside. Our hotel of choice is the Monterey Le Frere, pardon my French, in the Umeda district. It was affordable, comfortable, clean, and most importantly, situated right above a strategic metro line. With only evening to spare, we moved on to Dotonbori, a popular and vibrant entertainment district known for its lively atmosphere, neon lights, diverse restaurants, and street food vendors. The district itself is centered around the Dotonbori Canal, which is lined with iconic street signs and billboards such as this Glicoman sign. This is a pilgrimage site for most avid and discerning travelers. Erected in 1935, this sign is a symbol of enduring nostalgia in the face of modernity. Another landmark here is the Ferris wheel of Don Quixote on the facade of the Abisu Tower, named after Abisu, the god of business prosperity. On the north side of the river bank, it's impossible to miss a massive shopping arcade that carries commercial name brands. For your information, stores here close at 8pm, much earlier than what you would expect. South of the riverbank, you will find busy restaurants and interesting food vendors with vibrant signs and glowing light that competes fiercely for your attention. Fugu is a type of puffer fish known for its potentially deadly toxin. It is a delicacy in Japanese cuisine and must be prepared by a licensed chef. It was our first time having fugu and we had both sashimi and grilled options. It was actually one of the most delicious fish meat we've ever had. My family headed back to our hotel, but undeterred by light rain, I alone proceeded towards a nearby Oebashi Bridge, which offered beautiful and romantic views. I also realized on the way back to the hotel area that this is a bustling red light district, full of gentlemen's clubs and well-dressed ladies, if you know what I mean. The next morning, we experienced firsthand the Osaka morning rush hour. It was a structured chaos with a beautiful, energetic rhythm to it. We boarded an old-timey train towards Kawanishi to visit the biggest botanical legend in Japan, Mr. Kunzo Nishihara. I filmed some episodes at his greenhouse for my main channel, Only Plants, links in the description below. His nursery houses millions of rare and spectacular plants collected from all over the world. Sakura Nomiya Park lives up to its name by offering a mesmerizing spectacle of cherry blossoms in spring. This serene oasis in the heart of Osaka offered spectacular scenic walk towards the Osaka Castle. Cherry blossoms bloom with confidence along pathways and riverbanks, making this the perfect spot for Hanami, an honored cultural practice that involves gathering with friends and families or colleagues under these magnificent trees. In no time, we reached the gates of the Osaka Castle. This is easily one of Japan's most famous and historically significant landmarks. It offers visitors a glimpse into the country's past and provides breathtaking views of the surrounding cityscape. The castle itself was completed in 1597 and played a crucial role in unifying Japan under the rule of a powerful warlord, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, as a key strategic and political center.
On our way back to the train station, we passed by beautiful parks with spectacular sakura blooms. Witnessing the joyful reaction of the passerbys that shared the path with us was simply priceless. The next morning, we took a train ride to Arashiyama, a picturesque district located on the western outskirts of Kyoto. Within a few feet from the station, we were warmly greeted by full blooming sakura trees in every direction. Visitors, young and old, burst into a frenzy of awe and joy upon witnessing these spectacular blooms. Honestly, I've severely underestimated the beauty of the sakura because photos and videos do not do them any justice and neither do the plastic ones that you see in cheap Chinese restaurants. In our extensive travels, this was the only time I saw my dad whip out his phone to capture the moment. Arashiyama is renowned for its natural beauty, historical landmarks, and serene atmosphere. A bustling main street filled with lively food and souvenir shops conveniently connect all the popular attractions, including the bamboo forest, Tenryuji Temple, and the Monkey Park. Arashiyama is easily accessible from both Osaka or Kyoto, making it a great day trip. We only had a few hours to spend here, but given the choice, I would have chosen to stay a night or two here just to immerse deeper into the tranquil charm of this beautiful district and all its attractions. One of the most iconic attractions in Arashiyama is the bamboo grove, which features towering bamboo shoots that create a unique ethereal atmosphere. When we arrived in the afternoon, it was already filled with tourists. If you wish to enjoy the forest to yourself, you will have to beat the crowd by coming at 7 a.m. Can you imagine the morning light streaming past these beautiful majestic trees? You can wander this town and most of its features for free, but for additional entrance fee, you can opt to tour smaller temples and historic houses that line the streets. We boarded a train from the charming Arashiyama station. The train itself were a piece of antique from the past, reminding me of collector toy items. Our next stop, Kawaramachi Station, a prominent central district of Kyoto that serves as a hub for both locals and tourists. More cheerful sakura blooms greet us along river canals right outside the station. Our feet carried us to nearby Pantocho, a historic and picturesque narrow alley in the heart of Kyoto. It's famous for its traditional wooden machia buildings, exclusive dining establishments, and its association with the geisha culture. Additionally, you can find various tofu-related dishes used creatively in traditional Japanese cuisine in Pontocho.
Running parallel to Pantocho Street is the picturesque Kamo River. This is the perfect place to soak up all that good weather, confide in friends, and create unforgettable memories. Splitting away from the family, I headed alone to Fushimi Inari Station towards the number one tourist destination in Kyoto. Fushimi Inari is one of Japan's most iconic and spectacularly beautiful destinations. As you enter the shrine's grounds, you are greeted by a host of fox statues known as kitsune. These foxes are considered messengers of the Shinto deity Inari, the namesake of this temple. According to Japanese folklore, the foxes have the power to shapeshift into beautiful women. And what these women do, I leave it entirely up to your imaginations. Even more famous than the temple itself is the Orange Tori Gate Tunnel, with millions coming to experience an unforgettable hike. These vermilion gates, known as Sembon Tori, create a seemingly endless path that leads you up to the sacred mount Inari. Now the entrance to the tunnels are packed with tourists, especially in the middle of the day, but those who wander further are rewarded with more intimate and serene experience because most of the crowd give up within the first 10 minute mark or so. It is worth knowing that every single gate was donated by an individual or a business as it is believed to bring good fortune. No one knows the exact number, but there must be over 10,000 Tory gates within the shrine's complex. In the middle of the hike, I came across this enchanting lake that created a natural opening to view trees and temples in the distance. I also found this curious contraption. I wonder what it does. The total hike is around 4 kilometers long and you will pass by shrines, tea houses, and panoramic views of Kyoto. There are drinks vending machines conveniently located throughout the hike, but I overheard some visitors complain that the prices of these machines go up the further up you climb. Fushimi Inari is dedicated to Inari Okami, the Shinto deity of rice, prosperity, fertility, and business. While this site offers spectacular sights and unforgettable adventure, it is important to be respectful and considerate to the religious practices and customs when visiting, just as you would with any sacred sites. I headed back to Kawaramachi to meet my family and had dinner at Ramen Sen no Kaze. The ramen served here were mind-blowing, but the wait was almost two hours long. Unfortunately, my mom had a bad fall while we split up earlier. She had shattered her kneecaps and was in tremendous pain. We took a taxi from Kyoto to Osaka where our hotel was. We stopped by a hospital in Osaka where a friendly and knowledgeable doctor advised my mom to use a crutch and to restrict movement for the rest of the trip. We then had comforting supper across from our hotel to calm our nerves. This was one of the best grilled beef we had in a long time. This is the Hilton Plaza Hotel Lobby where I filmed an amazing episode on Sakura and the art of Japanese flower arrangement, Ikebana. That episode shows you how all this is put together by a legendary botanical master, Kunzo. Episode link will be up above and also in the video description below. The next day, we offered our mom to stay at the hotel to nurse her wounds, but she ushered us away, imploring us to go out and enjoy the day without her. Our destination was one that she has been to before and highly recommends us to go. Nara is a city with a rich history, as it used to be the capital city of Japan. Next to Nara Station is the world-famous Deer Park. 
The large population of freely roaming deer are considered sacred and protected as national treasures. This park is in the vicinity of many historical landmarks and UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Do they bow every time you give them food or before you give them food? Sometimes before now. And you also bow to them? Oh, it bows back to you. How cute. Cute. In Nara, you'll often see deers bowing their heads. This behavior is a result of interactions with visitors who bow before giving them crackers, and the deers have learned to mimic this gesture. This park is home to approximately 1,000 Sika deers, which are a symbol to the city and are also considered messengers of the gods. Visitors can purchase Shika Senbei or deer crackers from vendors in the park. These crackers are specially made for the deer. My sister is pointing out that the deers actually leave the vendors alone. They only beg for the crackers once a tourist has made a purchase. It was a brisk and memorable 15 minutes walk to Todaiji Temple with a lot to see along the way. Nandaimon, also known as the Great Southern Gate, is a significant and imposing wooden gate located at the entrance of the Todaiji Temple. Passing through it instills the sense that you are entering a sacred and important spiritual space. On both sides of the gate, you will find two colossal wooden statues of Neo, which are guardian deities. Designated in 1998 as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Todaiji Temple is one of Japan's most iconic and historically significant Buddhist temples. Built in year 728, it holds the distinction of being one of the country's largest and oldest temples. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to the price of these liquors in 7-Eleven. It is around the same price as a bottle of mineral water. Alcohol is actually cheap in Japan and consumption is very common. We bought some bento lunch boxes from the convenience store and took a stroll along Saho River in search for the perfect hanami spot. This is my sister's favorite cherry blossom spot and she begged me not to reveal this secret location on YouTube. But you know, I just couldn't help it. When you type in Kawaji cherry trees on the Google Maps, it will lead you to this exact location. Spectacular cherry blossoms bloom with vigor along riverbanks. With every wind blow, a few petals are carried in the wind, helpless and lifeless, but lively nonetheless. When you get up close to each flower and stare into it, it stares defiantly back. As if a magic spell has been cast, I was captivated by their beauty once more. My dad and sister walked ahead of me because these videos actually take a lot of time to film and it looks like they found the perfect spot. Fully trusting the cleanliness and safety of Japanese fresh water, I plunged my hand right in. The water felt cool and refreshing to the touch. I'm glad I did it. After a satisfying lunch and a strong drink, we were all tipsy. A photo shoot with these majestic sakuras in the backdrop seemed like the logical thing to do at the time. Now, I don't typically like to be filmed or photographed. That's why most of these videos do not show my face, but I'm learning to open up, be comfortable with myself, and communicate better with my audience.
We've reached the end of the episode, and for those of you concerned, my mom took a few months to recover from her injury. In fact, she took physiotherapy and has been working out. She's now right as rain and stronger than before. I hope that this inspires us to have faith in our body's ability to heal, and that sometimes these processes require time, hard work, and endurance. As usual, I hope you will take a few seconds to like and comment this video. It is the only way to let YouTube know that this episode is worth recommending to others. I wish you all well and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!